All right, I'd like to call the April board meeting to open order. Please put a salute to the flag. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, to get started this evening, we have some guests here to discuss school budgets. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, introduce and welcome uh, Mr. Uh, Handler from Pine Plains School District. Thank you. Have you go first since you were the first one here? All right, just a, a little one picture. Thank you. When um, I took my teaching methods course, which was 150 years ago, they always said, hand something out. <laughs> you know? That was in East Stroudsburg. People know where East Stroudsburg is? Yeah. Pennsylvania. 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 Yeah. So, what I'm going to do. I'll just have you stand right over the Oh, floor. sure. Thank you. Ah, the, the camera. <laughs> so, what I'd like to do uh, tonight is a little bit of budget, but more while we're doing at the Pine Plain schools. Now, we had nine towns. And in fact, um, sent the invitation out to all the town boards and got some five responses. I was very pleased. So basically going around and I think it's good for the town boards to hear from their school districts um, because we're partners, share the same constituencies. Now we don't have a huge chunk of Claremont, but we do have uh, some residences and and come up here for some kids. So um, I'm happy to be here and I'm happy for the invitation. Little bit about what we're doing. Uh, some initiatives that um, I'd like to point out. We have the only ag program in Dutchess County and the only FFA in this entire area. Uh, we're very proud of that. And uh, continued success of that program is, is certainly very important to us. We have a new ag teacher, she just came on board, young graduate from Cornell, and uh, the program's thriving. Um, we have an ag day in October, which is kind of a mini county fair right on the grounds of the school. We have barns on the grounds of the school, animal judging the whole, the whole bit. So, you know, one thing that we're really pleased with is, is the Ag program. We are going to start a pre-K full day next year for all of the youngsters whose parents want to send them who are four years old by December 1st. So we'll be picking up a few three-year-olds from that September to December time slot. We think it's extremely important to get these kids off to a good start. Um, you know, we have a lot more parents who both parents work and they have to depend on child care. And it's not maybe when all of us were uh, going through the growing up stage where you had parents home to read to you and, and to do those kinds of things. So this will be um, at our Cold Spring School and um, we're really excited about it. We sent a postcard to every resident in the school district, got 53 responses that said, yeah, we're, we're pretty excited about uh, having that program. And since our kindergartens have been averaging in the middle 60s, that's, that's most of the youngsters. We have something called Tech Ed. Um, and in fact, I want to acknowledge uh, my colleagues from Red Hook because they've been extremely valuable in, in hosting my tech ed teacher, new tech ed teacher, in looking at their program. They have a great program at middle school and high school uh, that we're going to model, frankly, and we're going to steal everything uh, that we can in terms of ideas. Um, Pre-engineering, electronics, uh, computer repair, 3D printing, the days of wood shop and metal shop, good, bad, or indifferent, uh, they're kind of past us. And, and we want to bring in something that's relevant 
uh, for the kids. So that's a big one. We started a one-to-one -one program at our middle school this year. Um, the tablet computers, not iPads, but similar Dell tablets, and their textbooks are loaded onto the computer. We're not buying any more print textbooks. Uh, print textbooks are um, kind of a problem because they're outdated virtually the, the day you get them and sometimes before that. So um, we're going to a, a tablet initiative and then for the high school kids, um, they'll have actually a laptop. Each kid will have that with their instructional software on the machines, taking them home, being able to do their work at home, with or without the internet, doesn't matter. Um, we'd like to see the day where the kids with uh, 100 pounds of books and backpacks um, all slumped over uh, as they go home, we'd like to see that kind of fade in the distance. And these things are really getting so inexpensive that um, <clears throat> we're able to do that. Mandarin Chinese, um, we're phasing out French. French, there's just not a lot of interest anymore. We have a small program that we're going to start this coming year, Mandarin Chinese. We're going to start it at the high school and at the seventh grade. Uh, China, the, the government, is basically going to loan us a teacher. And um, uh, they're interested in seeing the language spread about. And so it's kind of a partnership. You'll have the opportunity to visit China in November and make the arrangements. So that's going to be going on. And then um, upgrading all the software K-12 so that we can uh, move eventually to an all-electronic uh, kind of thing. Um, you know, maybe print is not necessarily dead, but it certainly has a lesser place these days. Uh, just a couple other things, state testing. In the news, right, the governor got his, his budget done, and a lot of what he was interested in has a heavy emphasis on, on the testing program. It's a problem. Um, if you want to know my opinion, um, I'll see you after the meeting. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. There, there was a big billboard just up in Greenport that said, opt out, it's trying to get parents to opt That's out. That's right. I've seen it. Um, yeah, and it's, it's happening in Red Hook, it's happening in Pine Plains. Um, we do too much testing. We do too much testing, and they want us to do more. And so our position, at least, has been, we swear an oath, like you folks do, that says we're going to uphold, you know, the laws of New York State. So we have to offer the test. We also recognize the parents' right uh, to have their children refuse to take those tests. It is a big, big uh, piece. Um, very quickly, and I'll get done in a minute, facilities. We're building a bus maintenance facility. Um, unfortunately, the state has slowed us down because they only have six people for the whole state reviewing the plans for any of their building uh, operations. Our current bus maintenance facility was built in 1950. We maintained the buses over an open pit. Not good. Wash limit grade, not good. So, you know, that's high on our, our list of things. And do some paving at the high school. Our auditorium hasn't been touched in 35 years. And it is the single performance venue for the whole school district. So we see a need to do some work there. And the generator I'll mention to you, uh, we're a Red Cross shelter at, the, at our high school, middle school, no generator. And if that doesn't sound like it makes a lot of sense, it doesn't because we're in an emergency, we're going to be having people coming, and we have no, no means to house them, so that's a biggie. Finally, budget. Um, last year, we had a zero increase in the levy. We were able to keep it to zero. I think 
um, Germantown. Germantown was did the same thing. Mm -hmm. weren't able to quite do that uh, this coming year. Our budget increase is 2.84 percent. The majority of that is pre-K, to be you know very honest with you. But our levy increase is only 1.4 percent, and that's well under the quote unquote tax cap uh, legislation. Individual bills may vary based on assessments, but our overall levy is 1.4. So, in Pine Plains, we have three polling places this year. We may not have three next year because this is the last year we can use the lever machines, and we have to either go out and rent or buy the optical scans, and so we may not be able to afford to maintain all three polling places, but they are in Pine Plains, Stanfordville, and Elizaville, and I believe the people here probably vote in Elizaville, I would guess. Um, three things, four things are on the budget, or on the ballot, the general fund budget, which I've just mentioned to you, three board seats. We have three board seats up for election. Um, we know we have two incumbents running, uh, one has said that she isn't, and so petitions are out, and the deadline's April 21st. We're asking for three uh, small buses and two large buses, uh, 353,000, and again, that's a regular rollover of buses. We keep them about 11 years, um, nine or 10 on regular runs, the last two with spares, and you know, the shame of it is um, the, the engines are perfectly good, but the bodies um, don't, don't carry well. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story. The, we sold them to a gentleman from Ecuador um, last year, you know, at the beginning of this year. And they bought two of our buses for cash, um, $20,000 in cash. I don't know. The money was good. We checked it out, <laughs> you know. But and then the other thing is we're able to. Um, the other proposition is to move uh, eight hundred twenty thousand dollars from the capital reserve um, for the bus facility. We have no debt in in the district. We're very fortunate. We've paid cash for everything. And this is the last piece of it. We're able to build this $3 million facility when it finally gets built uh, without any borrowing. And we're pretty proud of that. Even the buses will be paid for um, in cash, a check, but uh, no borrowing. So that's our story at Pine Plains. I will say that we work very closely with our colleagues at Red Hook, Rhinebeck, and Weebatuck, which are the three that immediately surround this. Germantown, not so much, because it's, it's kind of a ways, a ways away, but um, on some things, too. And um, I'll turn it over to these guys and be happy to hang around and answer any questions. Would you mind a couple of quick questions? Well, you go right ahead. Yeah, you guys so, can wait. <laughs> <laughs> I was just curious, uh, what's your policy for opting out? I sent a draft of a letter, <clears throat> which I ran by our legal counsel, and it basically says this. We believe that you ought to have your kid tested, uh, participate in the test. First of all, it helps us know how your child's progressing. Second of all, it's used to determine whether or not we're successful as a school because if we don't have enough kids participate, we get put on the nasty list, okay? So it's, it's my personal um, encouragement to you as a parent to have your child tested. However, should you wish to have your child refuse to test, and that's what they call it now, test refusal, then we want a written note written document from you, and we will um, uh, have your child in a separate setting in doing a quiet activity. We don't recommend it, but that's your right as a parent. Okay. 
because some I've heard some other you know the sit stair was one of the things you have to sit in there. And I'm just wondering if you had any policy set up for what you were connecting. You know? The problem we'll have is if a kid refuses and we can't either have we don't have anything from the parent, mm -hmm. or we can't get a hold of the parent, we have to have that test in front of the kid. Okay. So, you know that's. That's why I sent the letter home. Please, parent, if this is what you want your child to do, then this is what you have to do. Okay. Now this kind of core testing, you use that for evaluation of the teachers also, right? Yeah, unfortunately. How, how do you do that when kids learn at different levels, and even some of your special ed kids that definitely learn at different Not levels? Not very well. And, and the testing that you refer to the, the amount that it counts in the teacher evaluation has been increased literally to 50% based on this last budget deal that the governor had with the legislature out of our control. Out of our control. And in fact, to not to get on the tirade, <laughs> but as trusting as these folks are, the principal of the school is not even trusted to do all of the observations anymore, to do all the evaluation. You have to bring in an independent person to share in that evaluation. So I'm afraid to tell you that there are folks maybe in high places who shall remain nameless who are not necessarily friends of public education. All right? Certainly not friends of teachers might have something to do with the teachers union not endorsing <laughs> his, his election, last election, but you can draw your own conclusion on that. <laughs> what else can I One last question. I know, uh, I'm glad to see the, you know, the amount of effort put into the computers and you know, computers, you have to have computers to do anything nowadays. But I'm sad to hear that uh, the workshops can be doing, you know, doing away with workshop classes because you know, computers can't build the house. They still need people that know how to, I'm in, I'm in construction, so that's why I'm going to On the other <laughs> hand, on the other hand, when a student gets a certain point of their high school career, if that's their interest, we have the second highest percentage of kids going to occupational education at BOCES of any of the school districts in Dutchess County. Uh, we have a very high percentage of kids uh, who do that. And, you know, it's, it, there's a place for everything. Uh, we have kids in the construction trades and the uh, mechanics, the whole, the whole shot. So it's a balance. Some of those courses are even good for kids that are going out to college. Absolutely. I know one of the most valuable courses I think I took in high school was mechanical drawing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We had, well, we see a lot of the kids in our current tech program at the BOCES who go on to two-year colleges, technical schools, sometimes four-year colleges. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, we encourage kids, you know, maybe a kid in an academic program who has some room in their senior year that, that go to BOCES for a one and done. Um, nothing wrong with that. Get a skill, basics, and, you know, it's, it's important for kids to have something, um, I don't want to say to fall back on, but, but uh, uh, something that they, that they can rely on as a skill. Not a bad thing. And not a bad thing that they learn some work ethic, too. <laughs> what else can I answer for you nice folks? I just wanted to offer an anecdote. About 17 years ago, I was in Guatemala City, and I saw a Red Hook bus down there. So it's not. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, cash. I'm telling you, these guys came in with twenty thousand dollars in cash, and and we did count it. Yeah, it was authentic. It works. Anything else I can answer? Uh, I'm good. We have some questions. Okay, right. well, I'll still hang much. around. I'll hang it. around. Okay, next I'd like to thank and welcome Mr. Finch and Mr. Mark from Red Hook School District. Thanks, Thanks Helen. Thanks for having us again. I really appreciate it. Interesting though, 80% of this board is in the Red Hook School District. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs>
I really would like my esteemed colleague to, to hear this, but I want to thank the board for allowing um, age to go before beauty. <laughs> and you are. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're going to talk, I think, mostly about numbers, but I do like to start with a couple of Red Hook um, anecdotes. And I wasn't um, meaning to be rude when I was checking my phone before while my colleague was uh, speaking, but I did receive an email from a parent um, just a couple hours ago, and I wanted to share it with you. Uh, it starts, hey, Paul, it's somebody I know from, uh, from the village of Red Hook. Just wanted to let you know that our excitement, Liam got accepted into 16 out of 16 schools. BU, uh, University of Rochester, ambassador among them, exclamation point. He is an amazing product of the education he's received in Red Hook. We're so amazed and proud. And, you know, I think that's um, one example of the, the good work we're doing with, with kids. Um, we have a student uh, non-voting board of education member. You may not know that. We've had that position for 10 years. Eight or 10 years. Eight or 10 years. And it's a very valuable position. We get um, an update as to what's <coughs> happening with, with the students at the high school from the student board member. Also, we hear from, from her about you know, things we're planning to do that may be a good idea, may not be a good idea from the student's perspective. Um, the last time she gave a report, we said, was there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, Jacks, it's Jacqueline uh, Davies. And she said, oh yeah, I got into Cornell. And so we were just thrilled that that happened. And, and it really points to what I tell parents, that if you make use of the opportunities that we have, we can help you, your student, get where you want them to be, where they want to be, um, any level do whatever they'd like, as long as you can take advantage of the opportunities that we offer. So I just share those two uh, nice anecdotes from Red Hook. Um, I'll cut to the bottom line. We're under the cap. We're not at 1.4. 1. 1. Uh, Bruce will give you the number. We're a little over two at this point, under the cap. Um, and we're maintaining those opportunities uh, for students that make us really proud. You know, IB program, AP courses, that sort of thing. Um, three foreign languages. A lot of what you had on your list are really similar. We haven't had uh, any work done in our auditorium in 35 years, right? We don't have those <laughs> so I'm not going to go down that I won't bring that up. Uh, anyway, so this year we're in a unique position. In the last seven or eight years, we've been you know, redu holding the line or reducing. This is the first year where we're thinking about some program enhancements. Um, so we're under the cap. We've got the opportunity, the existing opportunities. We've had three or four things break our way. So we've had teacher retirement system. The contribution rate has gone down. Health insurance, Bruce is uh, the guru of health insurance, came in at about 5.5% uh, uh, increase. And it's, he'll tell you, it's sad to be talking about that as a good year when it's 5.5%, but when, when it rolls at double digits um, very often, it's a good year for us. Um, and also we had six retirements. Um, we didn't expect um, six, we expected four or five and we got six and so we get the breakage there and we bring in new employees at a lower rate. So we'll, we'll try to dig into the list of improvements that we have in mind. Pre-K is one of the improvements that we have in mind. Um, we wouldn't be able to do it for um, all students. We'd have to run some kind of lottery system and it's still um, something we're thinking about. So I'm not committing to pre-K here, but I'm telling you it's something we're definitely um, consider. We're looking at our technology curriculum. We um, have a brand new K-5 curriculum working on the 612 curriculum and we need somebody to come in and help implement that. A technology integration specialist. So we're looking at that position as something we want to add. We have a transition specialist at the high school. It's, uh, she's a contractor. If you've ever run into her, she's just terrific. Her name is uh, Peg D'Onofrio. If you ask me what she does, she's Red Hook's answer to affluent parents who are able to go out and uh, buy someone to walk through the college application process with their, with their child. Um, she is there really to, to help students have a vision for themselves. Where do you want to be from grade, you know, thinking about it, grade nine, where do you want to be, what do you want to do, what's the right sequence for you to take? Somebody that can spend more time than a guidance counselor necessarily thinking about those things. So we're going to add to some of the time for the transition specialist. Um, and a whole, there's a long list of things that we've put off. So whatever we can do, we don't have a lot of money, we think, to um, make program enhancements, but, but we have some. Um, as uh, my colleague mentioned, the budget process 
was kind of held up this year by Governor Cuomo. We have uh, numbers now. I would caution um, you, and you, you know this, but for, for the record, um, media reports about how much we get as a school district are often misleading. I think Red Hook was quoted in the paper in the five, five percent. Really, at the end of the day, we think the number's gonna be in the three percent. What happens is they overstate um, certain aid, uh, run aid categories like transportation aid. So they'll give you this inflated number and say, oh, we gave Red Hook, what are they complaining about? They got, you know, five, six percent. Well, that's, that's not going to materialize for us. We think it's three and a half percent, thereabouts. We're grateful for it, but we want people to not be, uh, um, we don't want the smoke and mirrors there, you know, for, for you all. We want you to know what we're really getting. So we think it's about three and a half percent. Um, I don't think um, my colleague mentioned the countywide efficiency plan. Did you mention that? No. Cool. Okay. So um, as a county, we're working on an efficiency plan. In a perfect world, if that plan is approved, um, all residential taxpayers will get a rebate check like they did last year for whatever uh, increase they experienced this year. So it makes me feel better about saying that I have, you know, two, 2.4 percent. In By the Greece. way, that check was just <laughs> prior to the election. <laughs> right, right. But it makes me feel a little bit better sitting next to my colleague who's at 1-4, um, knowing that um, if this plan is approved, you'll get that, that money back. And you should be held um, flat, um, not to last year, but the year before is the base year. Okay. Uh, what else? I think Bruce will just give you the numbers at this point, and then if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Yeah, so Paul touched on the numbers a little bit. I'll just run through those and uh, some of the technical details leading up to the, to the budget vote. So uh, our year-over-year -year expenditure increase is at 1.98, and the tax levy increase will be at 2.34%. Uh, that will be slightly under, uh, but within uh, the tax cap. As Paul said, we're working on the countywide uh, efficiency plan, which is... Uh, the next criteria, the next hurdle that school districts were asked to get over uh, in order to ensure those rebate checks in the fall. So last year, districts just had to stay under the tax cap and everybody got those checks. Uh, this year, districts are required to stay under the tax cap and have an approved efficiency plan. And we're working, that on a, uh, working on that on a countywide basis. Uh, we think Red Hook will contribute its share. In other words, our 1% of our tax levy will contribute uh, to the countywide plan, but then we'll also be able to benefit uh, by doing that as a group, uh, having collective thinking. Uh, there are some efficiencies out of some of the bigger school districts in the southern part of the county uh, that should be beneficial. And actually, we're aiming um, to do one and a half or two times the required 1% efficiencies uh, because it's a bit unclear as to what efficiencies are going to count and what efficiencies they're going to throw out when they get the plan. So uh, we'd like to have a little extra on there so that uh, even if they uh, decline some of our proposed efficiencies, uh, we'll, still be, uh, we'll still be able to, to meet the requirement. Um, leading up to the budget vote, there are a few key dates still to come. Uh, the budget that we're talking about tonight actually is not a Board of Education approved budget. Right now the Board is scheduled to adopt the budget that we're talking about at the April 15th meeting <coughs> next Wednesday. Um, assuming that they do that, we will be talking about this same budget at the public hearing on May 6th. Uh, that's the first Wednesday in May. Um, it is uh, necessary for a, re for a voter to be registered to vote in the Red Hook budget vote. Um, so we have a special registration day on May 13th. That happens from noon to 9 at the Mill Road School. Uh, if you're registered to vote in the county elections, you're already eligible to vote in the school district election. Uh, if you're registered exclusively for the school district election and have voted in the last four years, you'll continue to be eligible. But uh, if you don't meet one of those two criteria, you have to come and get registered to vote uh, if you're going to vote on the statewide budget vote date, which is May 19th. Um, on our ballot will be our budget. We have one seat uh, up this year for the Board of Education. Uh, we have a bus proposition at $265,000. That's for two full-size buses and a van. Um, the Red Hook Library is going to come back on this year. If you remember last year, we had both the Red Hook and Tivoli Library folks with us 
uh, both looking for fairly significant percentage increases in the amount of money that goes to fund the libraries. Uh, the Tivoli Library declined this year to uh, go for an increase, but the Red Hook Library is seeking a modest increase, uh, about $4,000, between four dollars and $5,000, uh, to add on to their $95,000 uh, appropriation for the Red Hook Library. So that, uh, they have the legal authority to tag on to our ballot. They asked to do that, uh, and they will be on the ballot uh, this year as well. Um, and then Paul was talking about the student board member. That has to be reapproved by the voters of the district every other year, and this is the year uh, that, uh, that the uh, continued existence of the student board member will be on the ballot. So those will be the things that you'll see on May 19th. Okay. Questions? <clears throat> well, kind of a similar question. How, uh, what kind of policy do you have for the Common Core opting out? It's exactly the same. Uh, really, it's exactly the same. I haven't sent my letter this year, but it's the same policy. I've told my principals it's going to be the same, same deal. Um, you know, um, like you said, we raise our hand and we say we'll uh, implement certain things with fidelity, and that's what we do. But we also recognize the parents' right um, to have their child refuse, and it is there is no opt out, but there's a student refusal mm -hmm. piece. Um, and I. My orientation is not to put the kids in, in the middle of, a, of an adult disagreement. So, uh, so I try to not have a sit and stare policy and, and I, I try to accommodate having them go to a separate room. Now if the numbers were to like explode, how, how I worked that out logistically at the building level, we'll do our best, but we've been able to manage it so far. Have you had a lot of pushback from your teachers? No. 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 I mean, they're not obviously they're not happy about um, the situation. I, don't, I certainly don't blame them. The tying teacher evaluations to test scores—it's um, uh, remarkably unstable over time. Those those scores. So I don't, I don't blame them for that. You know, you've had uh, weird things happen over the last few years with the scores. Well, you'll have one teacher who does um, really uh, you know poorly, maybe on the observation portion of the uh, the evaluation, but because of the way the test scores worked out, they're proficient or they're highly effective and then you have the opposite happen and, and you know, it just doesn't seem to be a, lot, a reliable instrument and uh, there are ways to improve it, but I think doubling down on, uh, on standardized tests is the wrong way to go. It's a disincentive for people to take challenging kids. Mm -hmm. You know, why would you go out of your way to, to take an at-risk at group of kids when, when you know, you're putting yourself at risk. And to, to answer your question um, about, you know, special needs students and how, in theory, in theory, they adjust for the numbers of special needs students in your, um, in your class. Uh, when you talk about how a kid did before they got to you and then how they did after they had you. Um, but what I've read, and I'm sure you've read it too, it's not adjusting in a way that makes sense. And they also do it for economically disadvantaged students and ELL, I think ELL students right. as well, English uh, language learners. So. There are strange things coming out of Albany <laughs> that happen when you have politicians <laughs> dictating to educators how schools should be run. And, and kind of reflect on that as an overall thing. There's lots of strange things coming out of all of <laughs> 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 One other question. Yeah, you mentioned pre-K. Now, you yeah. don't have that in your budget. You're looking into that? We're looking into that with the, with the money that we think we'll have available if the board um, approves this final budget. We think we'll, we'll have a couple of hundred thousand dollars um, to either adjust the tax levy down slightly, add some additional staff, or do some unique things. Um, one of the things we're thinking about is the pre-K. There is money that's available um, through a grant process, but we can't hang our hat on it uh, right now. Um, there's also this smart bond money. I don't think you mentioned that, and I didn't mention that either because we don't know. We don't know. We don't really know. You know, you voted on whether or not to uh, borrow money that across the state. That $5 billion dollar thing you would should people approve? Yeah. We, we still have not <clears throat> seen any guidelines yet on how to apply for what when that money's coming, any of it. That's a, you know, we were, we're slated in Red Hook to receive 1.4 million. That's a big number. We, have, we don't know if that's a real number. We don't know what the guidelines will be. Um, is, is there any discussion with the local uh, 
I'll call them nursery schools, mm -hmm. that already provide mm -hmm. the same similar type of service? Mm -hmm. I mean, is there anything with the school? We're not far enough along to have that conversation. We've told okay. them that we're looking into it. We have a, a, a regular group now that comes together. One of the things that I started a couple of years ago was a regular meeting with uh, preschool directors, and that sort of transformed into um, professional development for them because what we recognized was they weren't necessarily getting the professional development um, that they needed, and they were welcoming it with open arms. So I was just in a meeting with them with the OTs, occupational therapists and PTs, physical therapists, giving them ideas of what to do with kids. Um, but we, yeah, we don't want to necessarily duplicate services. We're not, you know, we're, we want to find a way to work together with right. the same customers, you know, there. Um, so we, we would try to figure that out. I believe Germantown already implemented it. They did, they got, they, they had the grant, I yeah. think. They got that grant. You know, we have a, we have a Head Start, um, program in our elementary school, and that serves a really economically um, needy group. Um, we think that there's a group that's sort of just above that to a certain threshold that uh, is not uh, getting the preschool experience that, that they need, and so we try to figure out a way to somehow target that group in there. Personally, I just see advantages and disadvantages, so it's something to weigh out yeah. from a taxpayer uh, standpoint. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, any other questions? Thank you for having All right. us. Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate Thank you, you coming in. Boy Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Okay, uh, let's get started with our regular meeting. Uh, move on to approval of prior town board minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Chris. Chris, any second? All in favor? Second. All right, opposed? Carried. Okay, we'll move on to the clerk report, please. Town clerk report for March 2015. Zoning Board of Appeals. Zoning ordinance, $25. Special use permits, one for ground mounted solar, $100. One for cell tower application, $100 and conference centers, $200. That's two for a conference center or events. Planning board site plan application, $75. Subdivision application, $125. Dog licensing, $40. Town clerk fees for solid waste, $1.50. Community house donations, $150. Decals, fishing licenses, $2.76. Total check for the general fund, $819.26. Trust and agency for escrow accounts for um, the ZBA, $150, I'm sorry, $150 uh, for a ground-mounted solar application escrow, $150 for a special event application, and another $150 for a second special event application. For the planning board, an escrow for $500 for a minor subdivision and $500 for a ground mounted solar for the planning board. So total check for trust and agency, $1,450. Paid to New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets for dog surcharges, $16. Paid to Columbia County Solid Waste, $18.50. Paid to New York State Department of Environmental Conservation for decals, $47.24. So the total for March, $2,351. Shoo! Those escrows are a little rough, right? <laughs> Motion to approve uh, accepting the coach report. So we'll Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Carried. Thank you, Mary. Okay. Mail review. What do we got? Anything? Can we do have a public notice from the town of Red Hook. <coughs> Excuse me. A public hearing will be held by the town board of the town of Red Hook on April 14, 2015 at 8 p.m. at the town hall on Broadway to hear all interested persons on a proposed local law number A of 2015 entitled a local law amending chapter 143 of the code entitled zoning of the code of the town of Red Hook regarding TND cottages in the traditional neighborhood development TND zoning district. The amendment will permit a larger size 
for a TND cottage in the TND zoning district. Copies available at the town hall for your review. Uh, it's been classified by the planning board as a type one action and declared its intent to serve as lead agency for the matter. A copy of the EAF is on file with the planning board secretary. And if you have any, you can comment in writing to the town board, 7340 South Broadway, Red Hook, New York, 12571. And that's it. Is there any definition of what TND is? TND, traditional neighborhood development. Okay. And Thank I guess you. that's what the cottages are, traditional okay. neighborhood. Okay. Thank you. Same initials, same letters. Yeah. That's okay. all I have. That's all you have. That's oh, that's all you have. All right. Um, I don't have anything. Let's move on to correspondence for the web committee. Evan, do you have anything? Um, Ed? Last month there was a, a couple of uh, new businesses that we added to our website uh, in, the web, in the business directory. Other than that, uh, it was pretty quiet. Okay. Anybody uh, have any comments, recommendations, suggestions for the web committee? Webmaster, no. Okay. Move on to committee reports. Well, yeah, I took a look at the uh, swing area and uh, it made it through the winter pretty well. There's about six tiles that around the middle upright for the swings that have kind of sunk down a little bit. We noticed those in the fall, but they probably need some, some work eventually. Uh, we're also working on the remediation with the DEC, and they had one contractor that that decertified, and they're looking for another one, and we're trying to get them to work with uh, Morris Associates to get our, our uh, road permit in there, and that's ongoing. Uh, Planning board and ZBA, as kind of indicated by Mary's report, has been pretty busy lately. It's got quite a bit of work coming up this month. Uh, and we do have a, an opening from Aldo Deusman that resigned and Ronnie Miller has been recommended. I did talk with him one morning, one Saturday morning a couple weeks ago when he came in and said he was interested. And I think the planning board chairman has contacted you also, right? And you know, he would like him appointed. So when we get the new business, I should have got that on the mm -hmm. agenda. We'll try to do that. Yep. And uh, that's it. All right. Thank you, Bob. Evan, you have anything else you want to add? Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Canon Fellowship has a uh, desire to store a uh, movable box for sound equipment upstairs in the community house. Um, I don't know if I handle that here or if there's questions. Um, um, yeah, let's, let's do it right now. That's fine. Do it right now. So basically, the, the box is uh, 60 inches by 44 inches by 30 inches. It would be on casters, so if you moved around, um, uh, pretty much your standard rectangular box uh, would be dyed so that it would fit the uh, color that's on the walls of stairs. Mm -hmm. Wooden. Um, now this is, it's, it's going to be movable, obviously. It's not going to be permanent right. on or anything, correct? Right. It'll be movable. The casters will have, like, you know, rubber coating on it or something so they don't mark, mark up the floor. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, obviously the board can chime in, but I see nothing, uh, no objections to this as long as it's not permanently mounted. You know, we move right. around, so that's that's fine with us. I mean, with me, anyways. Right. I and I looked at the lease quickly. I didn't see anything in there that would say that that this was not appropriate. I have no problem with it. I, I'm in agreement with the casters being some kind of rubber coating. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, provided that's there. I, yeah, I, I double checked on that, and I was told it would probably be similar to the casters you'd see on, like if you go to a high school where they had the movable pianos on a metal frame mm -hmm. with a kind of a heavy duty caster with, you know, it's designed to be moved around. Yeah. Do you, you have any estimate of what the weight will be in that? Uh, I don't have a direct estimate. Um, it's going to be lighter than, say, a piano. So maybe, yeah. I think maybe we're talking 150 or something yeah. in that neighborhood, probably. Because uh, some some of the flooring there does move a little bit. Right. When walk on it, but I, it, it should be fine. Yeah. And I think Evan and I talked. We probably 
take a look at some point and see where, where is a good place to keep it out of the way. Store it all Probably a larger size caster would probably roll a little bit easier as well. Yeah. Something too small may catch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, should we pass a motion to allow this or so it's on record? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll move that we uh, approve it. All right. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No, that was no question. All right. <coughs> All right. Anything else? No. Uh, no. Okay. Chris, you got anything there? Okay. okay. Dawn? Uh, I know I sent an email and Mary made copies also, but. I updated all the contact information that was in the emergency preparedness plan. Basically, in the plan itself, I left that all alone. There were three uh, instances where I updated either the website for the State Emergency Management Office, the Red Cross number, or um, the, the plan said that there was a phone that was maintained by the town in the community house, and I found that was no longer the case. So other than that, it's all just contact information that I updated. There's radio stations on there that have been in, in business for a while. I added some new businesses like the, cold, the ice and cold storage in Livingston. I added that. Um, I added CBS. We think of it as a pharmacy, but you can buy just about anything in there. So um, I'm looking for, I don't know if it's appropriate to adopt an updated plan or if we need to just. Um, um. You know, we should because then it just puts one of those last updated. Okay. You know, I think we should because uh, it shows that we updated all the contact information on the record. Okay. So, it's at the motion to adopt the uh, updated preparedness plan, or emergency preparedness plan. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. That way it's updated. It's second. Is that right? Yes. Thank you, Paul. It's actually kind of fun. <laughs> In a weird way and I just wanted to let people know too that um, on this past Saturday in my role as town historian I met with Susan Roth who was the town historian in Germantown and what she's looking to do and it's something that I'm in agreement with is that the, the historians of the three towns Germantown, Livingston, and Crema that we start to work cooperatively together and see what we can do to advance the history in this end of the county, I think a lot of times too, the history in this end of the county is tied to the state historic site and there's lots of stuff that goes on outside of there. So we may at some point look to do some kind of an event of, with the three towns together. So we're, she and I are gonna meet again in two weeks and I'll have more to report next month. Great. I know, uh, I would sh I'm sure if you wanted to invite uh, Mary Howell, the county oh, right, right, right. she would love to be involved with something like that. She just, yeah. you know, she loves, all the town history and she has a ton of stuff out there right right so uh, she'd be a good one to at least yeah. include yes definitely good excellent thank you okay yes. oh, i'm sorry oh that's right i should mention that what the the updated plan will go to the fire department it will go to i believe it's bill black at the county emergency um, management office and it will also get updated and added onto our website so we'll get you a PDF, and we'll make sure that we have a Word document so that we... Yeah, I was thinking maybe we'd put both on the website, okay. and that way we won't oh, be in good, the situation yeah. of not having good to plan. Good plan. Excellent. Very good. Okay. Uh, move on to old business. Uh, DEC update, just uh, not a whole lot more to add from what Bob said. Uh, I've been in contact with uh, Michael Mason, which is our contact through the DEC for the remediation plan. Um, the contractor, the contractor that they originally did some uh, initial work with, uh, it was decertified and is waiting to be recertified as uh, acceptable on state contract bid. Um, it's throwing a little bit of a monkey wrench into the plans. It may take a, a month or two for that to happen. Um, uh, Michael Mason said he was possibly looking at rebidding or bidding this out um, in open bid form to keep the process moving so we don't have to wait uh, for the recertification of that one contractor that he wanted to use. So, um, as it stands right now, that's where we are. And I'm waiting to hear for any updates. I told them, please let me know when there was anything new um, and uh, to keep me up to date. Uh, the ball is in their court, obviously. Um, so we're waiting on that. The only thing that we do have a concern about is the driveway entrance, getting the permit approved. Uh, we don't really want that process to be on hold for the next month while they're waiting for a recertification. 
So um, we actually asked them if it would be you know, possible to have Morris Associates, our engineer, get involved and work on the permit for the, the driveway permit so it gets started and gets completed in a timely uh, fashion. Um, we are going back and forth working on that right now. Not sure uh, where that stands, but uh, by next month we should have a good update on that. And I can let everybody know where we are. Uh, because we do want, especially get that permit in the process because that's important. So we will, uh, I'll update everybody as soon as I have some new information. About Did you find out the soil met the criteria? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot that. Uh, yes, we did get the results back. I didn't see them yet, but uh, Michael Basin told me that the, the material is usable. Um, it was passed through whatever tests they ran for compaction rate and chemical wise for the underneath the bottom foot of fill. So um, that does save, uh, save us some money, saves them some money. And uh, again, unfortunately, we can't offset our cost with it, but it will reduce the overall cost, which will reduce the 10% we have to pay. So it is usable, so that's a good thing. So, um, other than that, uh, they still, you know, they're originally on track to start, I think they were looking for May, I don't know when that's gonna start now, if this is gonna hold them up a little bit, but you know, again, it's gonna happen this summer. So it will be done this summer. Uh, okay, uh, repairs to community house. I put this back on old business because we talked about it last year. We actually pulled it out of the budget since we had a really difficult winter. Spent uh, a lot of money um, with our uh, with our uh, work last year for the highway department, and I thought that was something we could hold off to save a little money. I'd like to put it back on the agenda because I think you know the front of the community house does need some repairs. There's some wood that needs to be addressed, some siding, and it definitely needs to be painted. So uh, I'd like to. I'm gonna. I didn't do it yet. I'm going to pull out the, uh, the old uh, work scope we had drawn up. I'm going to dust it off and see if we can put that out to bid and get some bids on, you know, doing some work and fixing up. We did put it in the budget this year. Um, and I think, uh, I think it's important that we really do take a look at at least, you know, doing this work before the building gets any worse. So, um, you know, we'll get it out, we'll bid it out, and take a look at the bids, and we get it back with those sealed bids. Uh, one question. Yeah. Dawn and I, and I think Bob as well, we're talking about this on Saturday. Dawn had brought up the cracks in the doors here and I think over on the other side. Is there any way we can, with whatever work we include on the community house, we can also maybe have someone look at the doors here and see if there's, or, you know, because they're two separate buildings, I don't know if we can do that, but. We could uh, certainly look at this, yeah, it's just to address the door cracks. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly, the other one you can see right out of, I don't know if this one, that, that can, can, this one can. can. Yeah, I mean, they need to be sealed up and, and you know, painted. So um, we could certainly right. include that with the work over there. I mean, it's, you know, this is very minor, but, you know, certainly. Right, right. It. But I thought if, you know, we move forward with that, maybe we can sort of include something like this, since uh, we were just discussing that. And one other thing I'd really like to take a look at is as uh, is, is a path for the community house. We've talked about this in the past, and right now it's it's gravel that goes through the, it, it's very difficult to, to keep the building clean. You know, and, and Evan, you probably noticed this on a muddy day, uh, we really ought to look into to trying to put a path over there. And it's been brought up before. We asked uh, Superintendent uh, Jimmy to take a look at it. He recommended or, or, or suggested, you know, it'd be very simple to put like a, a just a blacktop strip path, you know, right over to the front entrance. Um, it's something we can consider. You know, I, I, we could have to get some prices together, see what it's going to cost. But I really like to do something rather than tracking all that stone, dirt, and mud into the building every time somebody goes in there. And, you know, it's chewing up the floors. Right. Uh, I think it's important that we uh, try to clean, keep it clean. So um, I'd like to take a look at maybe have him give us an estimate because that's something he could do for us. Um, and have him give us a price of what, he, you know, what it would cost. Yeah, I think um, I'm more in favor of looking flat top. It's cleaner. Um, it's certainly easier to maintain. Um, you know, you could do stone or something like that that would maybe look a little fancy, but you're going to spend a lot more money. You have to hire somebody to do it. Um, you know, like a, like a flagstone or something. Right. Just putting gravel down. It's not really cutting. So, but again, that's something we could inexpensively have him take a look, give us a price, and then consider. Right. So I think we'll maybe ask him to do that. Yeah, I'd be in favor of blacktop too. I think it would work. Well, I know there's some people may think that it's not historic enough, but uh, yes. mm -hmm. you help with the accessibility too, because yeah. yeah. gravel's hard in that right. wheelchair. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm going to have him see if he can get us some numbers for next meeting, so we can consider that. Um, Good point. Okay. No, new business. Uh, chips funding. I received an email. Uh, 
Senator Kathy Marchion about the uh, CHIPS and Extreme Winter Recovery Funding. They approved um, in the new budget an increase in the CHIPS funding for the, uh, the harsh winter we had. Again, similar to like last year, they increased to give us a little extra money uh, for extra road work. And our, our increased amount is $6,850.96. So that's, uh, that will certainly help offset some of the costs we've spent. Um, you know, give him the ability to, to certainly do the roads that he planned on doing and, uh, you know, reimburse some of the money that you know, came out that we wouldn't necessarily have to spend with the, with the winter we had. So uh, that is a nice little bonus to receive because we certainly we can see the uh, budget reports that, um, you know, this winter took a toll on the highway budget, but for sure, and uh, certainly took a whole toll on the roads. I mean, you see, uh, actually most of the town roads are in pretty good shape, but a lot of the roads have had uh, a lot of wear and tear this year, so uh, uh, it'll help cover the additional cost of repair. Claremont roads, town roads are probably in as good or better shape than any of the surrounding towns. I mean, there's been a couple of roads in Retro Cup right now with lots of potholes. Let's not be in the town though. No, <laughs> no, I, but it, it, it's common. Yeah, common. Uh, but, but here I, I finally found one, and when I mentioned to Jimmy they had already seen it, and they, and they filled it. Right. Well, you know, they do the best they can. Obviously, no, every they, town probably does, but uh, you, our roads are in very good shape, and that's because of the, you know, the, the, the good maintenance schedule that he's got set up, and that's why you know, we wanted to do those, you know, Nevis Road next year or this year, and uh, he certainly wants to keep on top of it so he won't accumulate holes and it, run down is, is, there, is there anything we can do as far as the county roads within the county? <laughs> Believe me, I've been working on it. I've been working on it very, very, very uh, tirelessly. Um, and it's it's not to any fault of the highway superintendent in the county, um, the funding. I mean, you know, there's it's just a tremendous amount of roads with very little money that we're allocating for roads. Um, this year we we did allocate an extra million dollars, like we did last year, but for the longest time we we're only given a million and a half dollars for paving each year. And you know, you go over you know how many two hundred some miles of roads, how you know you can only do about five, six miles with a million and a half dollars, or 10 miles. So yeah. it really didn't keep up with us. So last year we started with an extra million dollar allocation, so to get two and a half million dollars, that helps, but it's certainly not gonna bring us up to where we need to be. Um, but we're working on it. I mean, it's slowly, it's just, it's just they're in such bad shape. Last, so year, many. last year road is one of the worst. That's and it, there's one little yeah, section of that. Well, just for well, on Dutchess County or Columbia County. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but there's, there's one section right where you, where the town where the county line is for a little ways that, that is the worst. So if they can't do the whole road, they should they should maybe you should ask them if they can. There were, you know, fix you know, holes in there. Coming from Dutchess yeah. County and you're doing 40, 45 miles an hour. Almost knocks you off the road. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 you pull into Columbia County, you're in trouble. It's a different world. Yeah. I will, I will bring that road up and see people what they can do. do. That is a short, <laughs> that is a short, short section of road. That's kind of route two they call it. Uh, that is a short section. They may be able to do something with that. Yeah, I mean, even if they can't do the whole uh, Columbia County Lasher Road, which probably ne needs it, but that section is the worst. Yeah. But, yeah. I've hit that point a few times. I know exactly yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. It's pretty uh, bad. I will. I will bring that section of the road up to them and see what they can do. Uh, if they, maybe they can squeeze something out of it. I don't know. But uh, it is a. It's an ongoing battle, and it's just. It's really just not enough money going around to, for the amount of roads the county has, unfortunately. Uh, all right. Uh, resolution. County resolution. We have a resolution. The county um, is asking every town to consider and pass. I believe most of the other towns have already done this. Um, they want me to sign an actual county resolution once the town has passed this. Uh, it's an intermunicipal agreement between the county and each individual town. Um, it's resolution number 40, 2015. And I'm just gonna read the, the first part. Of, Whereas the county, the county of Columbia and the town of Claremont desire to enter an inter, into an intermunicipal cooperation agreement pursuant to Article 5G of the General Municipal Law of the State of New York. Be resolved that this intermunicipal cooperation agreement is made this sixth day of April 2015 and between the County of Columbia and the Town of Claremont. Each party hereto a municipal cooperation here and after referred to as party parties created under the laws of the State of New York and authorized pursuant to Article 5G of General Municipal Law of the State of New York. But basically what it goes on to say is they want to have an intermunicipal agreement set up so if we're at any time need to use or utilize the county workforce, their loader, their you know their men, um, if we need to use them 
we have an animus within itself so they can go after this funding for the efficiency funding is what it comes down to. Um, so it's nothing more if you read all the rest of it to say it's an animus we bring between us and the county. And it, it's both ways so that they could use us and we could use them. Right, which technically a problem. But there's no. Be. Yes, it is. And it also has a clause in there where we can cancel within 30 days notice from either party. So it's, you know, we're not. But there's no there. obligation. Correct. Yeah. This has nothing to do with the intermunicipal agreement we have with Livingston and Germantown. No. No, this is the county for each individual town will have the same exact, basically, resolution. So I'd like to ask for a motion on So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay, highway budget. I don't know why I put that on there. Uh, I think that was just to discuss the where we stand at this point with the highway budget as far as uh, every basically every line is fine. As you get down to the snow removal line, it shows we have a balance of $1,985 left. And that's just the result of the winter, the sand and salt um, that was purchased this year. At $25,000, we've almost went through our entire budget, and it's only April. Uh, obviously, this year we should have done the sand and salt till the fall. But uh, that's why that chips, extra chips funding, I think, is very important. So we don't, you know, we can use that for the roads. We can reimburse some of the other money that we had into, you know, to, to offset any stand that's all we might need for the fall. So I think that's, uh, you know, it actually helps us out quite a bit. We'll have to do a budget amendment probably later in the year once we actually receive this money. I'll make sure we're going to receive it before we do a budget amendment. Um, but, uh, you know, it will make a big difference to us for this year's budget. Okay, planning board appointment. We've, uh, as Bob mentioned earlier, we had uh, a resignation from Aldo Duzman, I believe two months ago. At that point, we uh, spoke to some people looking for someone to put on the planning board that would be interested. We spoke to the chairman of the planning board. He had a recommendation. Um, he checked with that individual, and uh, he brought back uh, Ronald Miller, Ryan Miller down here. Um, I certainly known Ryan for years. Um, Larry's known for years, so he'd be a perfect individual to have and a good asset to have on the planning board. Um, at this point, we've had you know several interviews. We don't really have too many people to pick from. We've already appointed everybody that was interested before to to one board or another, and uh, you know, I certainly have no objection to appointment to the uh, planning board. Excuse me. Yeah, and as I mentioned, I did talk with him when he came in on a Saturday. Also, we talked similar to what we would have done if we had interviews. My thought was that it might be good for us to have an interview just so that the process is followed, but maybe appoint as a uh, alternate to this meeting, and then the next meeting we could appoint officially as a full member. Uh, that well, way we've had time to. Well, there, there is already an alternate for the planning board. The planning board. Yeah, he which isn't really interested in a full time position, so that's why he wants to stay okay. as an alternate. Which yeah. worked out very well for right. what we've used. And we for. we have in, in the past we, we have done appointments with and without interviews. Right. I, I know yeah. it's possible. It just seems a yeah. little bit preferable if possible to do an interview. That way we had time to you know he's well known, so it's not. Yeah. It, it, it's also a uh, filling out the unexpired term. So if there's any problem, we won't have them on there for seven years. What's the length of that one expired? The it expires next, next December? The end of this? Uh, 2016. This over here. 2016? December 31st, 2016 is the expiration of this term. To fill, the, to fill that term. Well, I tell you, I mean, we, we could set up, I mean, we can set up an interview process if you'd like. Um, you know, the last couple times we've really didn't have a whole lot of turnout. I mean, I was going off the recommendation of the planning board chairman, um, and since the individual I know, I think uh, most of us know who the, you know this individual, I figured it would be a perfect fit for the board. Um, but, I mean. I reached out some too, and I didn't find anyone. It's hard to find anybody either. to get anybody to do anything. So, um, I, don't, I don't, again, I don't have a problem with interviewing, but again, we haven't had a whole lot of turnout. I'd be happy to have him serve on this board. I know, I know Larry would like to have him because he's got a lot of work coming up. He'd like to have him for the next meeting, which is coming up this week. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'd like to uh, well, you know, go ahead and put him on. Can I entertain the motion if you want to you know, consider putting him on now? Or, you know, that's fine with me. So we'll 
Second. Okay. Motion second. Bob made the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? You okay with it? No, I, 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 I think I, Evan made a valid point, but at the same time, this is, yeah. seems to be the right thing yeah, as well. That helps so us. It's also helpful to interview to get people if you have multiple people, so you have so another pool to look through. Right. If somebody else comes, you know, if you need another position, but you know, the last couple of times we just nobody's really showed up. And, you know, it's been difficult, so um, basically we're begging people to be on the board. So it's to have them, you know, volunteer to be on the board is nice. So. Well, I think his point is well taken for the future, though. I mean, okay. I think I'm, I'm, you know, fine with what we've we've um, done, but I think going forward in the future, we should. Uh, do the interview first. Okay. okay. We'll make that clear. It'll be Ryan Miller to fill out the unexpired term right. until uh, December 31st, 2016. Yes, it is. Okay, oh, you got that. All right. Thank was you. that all eyes? Yes. yes. Or, I guess I'm staying. I, I'm not quite well, you're changing. <laughs> I didn't hear. <laughs> if well, I didn't say I, but it, I'm not really opposed. Okay. So. All right. How was that goes? So much better. As an abstention? Or <laughs> or uh, sure. <laughs> it's on the hill. Take your pick. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, that's about it. Uh, Supervisor report, uh, just to go over a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody that was involved with the town Easter egg hunt. Um, I appreciate the volunteers, uh, everybody that came out, the, the people that helped out. Uh, Mary, I remember seeing you there. Um, it was very nice to have uh, Dawn, I think. You were there, I saw you there. Chris's well. family was Chris there. Was there. I, I wasn't. Oh, see, really? <laughs> so, uh, again, thank you to all the volunteers to help put this together. Um, I know the weather was uh, not really cooperating, so they weren't sure what to have an inside, outside, and end up having an inside. But uh, again, everybody, thank you for their for your help and, and effort in putting this putting this on. I know the kids. Uh, I'm sure the kids enjoyed it as well. So, I certainly appreciate it. Um, I want to thank the highway department too. I don't know how much they did or what they did, but I know they brought some tables around and helped out a little bit like they usually do setting up for all these events. Um, again, you know, they certainly do much more than they needed to do, so I appreciate their help on everything. And the fire department. And the fire department for parking cars and, and uh, directing traffic. Absolutely. They uh, had three or four people out there working on the traffic, which was nice. To make it a safe event. Um, Next month we will, I believe, we will have Germantown School District here to go over their budget. Um, they are waiting to uh, finalize their numbers. They didn't have it ready for this meeting, but they will be here for next month's meeting, as far as I know. And uh, that's about it. They had a referendum vote that uh, almost passed last month on uh, a bunch of work they wanted to do with a new auditorium. Uh, it's pretty close, uh, 300 and some votes uh, for. And, 340 against and roughly, so it was a pretty close uh, vote. I know they're going to plan on putting it up again for another referendum vote, um, maybe splitting out some of the information. So, you know, since nobody here is in the now school district, I'll talk to everybody else. Um, <laughs> they're going to try again and uh, certainly uh, be interested that they, uh, they may even bring that up at the next meeting when they come in. I don't know the date for the next uh, referendum vote, but they are going to, like, like I said, split that up and try to do this again. So, it'll uh, be interesting to see what they come up with. Uh, there was quite a few necessities on that list, and uh, certainly I hope they're addressed at least. So, um, county, county, uh, what's going on with county? Pine Haven. I hate to talk about Pine Haven much more, but um, Pine Haven, I was, as the board voted to uh, to privatize, um, we just passed the resolution to bring on a uh, full-time administrator from the company that is purchasing Pine Haven uh, from the Premier Healthcare. Um, he will be a full-time administrator that will be, uh, I believe, will be starting uh, sometime next month, maybe then this month, to uh, come in from uh, Premier and start uh, trying to build the census, start working on the home, to bring, bring it up to where they want it to be uh, as they take over. So is he working for the county then? He is actually uh, a county employee <coughs> until the actual sale goes through. Uh, part of the problem was we didn't actually have an administrator. So he will come in and fill that void. We will be, and I abstain from the vote to appoint this guy because they did not have a salary attached to the resolution, um, which I'm surprised anybody voted for, but you know, uh, that's the way the county works. Um, so I abstain from the resolution because there was no salary attached to it. Um, so I'm waiting to see, but they tell me it's under 
what is budgeted, what we paid the old administrator. So, um, again, uh, got to be to see to be seen, but uh, he will be starting probably after a full board meeting once they approve it for the county. <coughs> uh, it is needed. Obviously, we need somebody there full time to start building the census, which will help us save money because in the interim, when they take over. If they build a census, it makes more money for the county. It's less that we have to subsidize. So it's actually a benefit for us to actually have a community start doing something uh, to benefit, uh, you know, the, the home. So I thought they had an interim. We had a basically an administrator's license hung on the wall. Oh, so, um, so that was part. It was of a part-time guy okay. that used to do it. Which nothing against him. He did a great job when he was there, but he just he was part-time. He couldn't do the job that we needed. Um, okay. But he was filling the void we had at that time. So this is rather important. Um, so I, you know, I certainly, even though I didn't support selling the home, I will support this position once I see what we're paying the guy. <laughs> um, courthouse, really, there's not much to, to say on the courthouse. That's pretty much uh, the bugs are being worked out. Uh, you know, final touches being on, put on the screens uh, for the new windows. I think we're just being put on a couple weeks ago. Um, again, just final touches. I think it's. Uh, it's up and running, really, really nice job, and there's not a whole lot more to say about it. If anybody has the opportunity to see it, hopefully it's on the uh, for the right reasons. But uh, it's a very nice, uh, very nice uh, job up there. I did get to go see it, and it is very it's beautiful. Nice. It is hard yeah. to believe it's the same building I worked in for years and years. Yeah. But it, they didn't do a lot to change, you know, the marble, the stairs, everything there is pretty. Yeah, they kept insane. all the old characteristics and, and really just emphasized and, and really. They did a nice job. I think really elevators nice. and yeah. nice something that bathrooms. needed to be done. It really needed to be done. It was very nice. Okay. For the price of it, I hope it's another hundred years where we have to think about it again. So. Yeah, it's very nice. <clears throat> uh, highway department, uh, was, you know, same problem that everybody has. I mean, they did, their budget is blown out of proportion. You know, blown out this year. I mean, they've spent uh, already spent most of their budget for the year. Same thing as all the towns. Um, they get extra chips money also. They will get extra funding. Correct. Uh, I don't know the amount yet because this just came out the other day in email. So, uh, but we don't. That will help offset a little bit. But um, you know, with the amount of roads and the county roads and the position, you know, positions or conditions they are, um, they could use about ten times that uh, each year. So, <clears throat> they're uh, again trying to do what the best they can with it. I mean, uh, you know, you can't expect them to do any more than what we'll fund them with. So, but they are uh, they're, they're working on it. And what else? Uh, I don't have a whole lot more. If anybody has any questions on any county issues, uh, please feel free to contact me, talk to me afterwards, get a hold of me. I'll certainly go over anything I can, any information I have. Uh, I guess that's it. Long motion to pay abstracts. Make a motion that we pay the general aspect, number four. Vouchers 80 through 109, the amount of 9,683 and 45 cents. Second. All favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Will we pay uh, highway abstract number four, vouchers number 26 through 43? In the amount of $9,884.48. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. We make a motion we pay trust and agency abstract number two, voucher number three, in the amount of $41.25. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Okay. Uh, move on. Public communications. Comments to the board. We don't have a big gallery here tonight, but anybody have anything like to say? If you would, please. Okay, thank you very much. Is there a time? Yeah, we've got a lot tonight, so we can make it quick. <laughs> I, I, uh, I first, uh, I'm very impressed with the board's characteristic right now. You're working really nicely together. It's very businesslike, and thank you very much for doing this job because I know. It's very hard to get people to do this in any of these things. I was on one town, one town board or another for 25 years, and so it just, uh, my life got a little too complicated, but I know this is very hard. I'd like to thank also the highway department and the, the, board, the road crew, because it was kept 
passable and, and better than passable. I knew when I came into Claremont after Route 9 that the road was going to be clear. Um, and the other evening, it was last week, there was a fire at uh, John Gall's house on Commons Road. And uh, I certainly want to thank the, although it wasn't my house, the fire department uh, was there. One of the people who I was talking to at the scene said that they showed up in three minutes. So, or after somebody made the call. So that was astounding. And there were also uh, crews here from uh, Tivoli, Elizaville, uh, Germantown. <coughs> Livingston. Livingston also, so uh, that was a tough break for the, the Gauls. Uh, and the reason I bring it up, other than to thank everybody, is that while I'm milling around talking to people, I talked to a couple of women um, who were uh, lived in houses along Commons Road. So they all asked me, oh, where, you know, which house do you live, etc. So they mentioned to me that they used to jog and walk down the road, but now they're afraid to because the cars go so fast. So I've raised this before. Uh, so it's not just me. I mean, you may be see them. Uh, so we all know that they aren't living on the road. These, the people who, who are, you know, they come, they, it's fun to go past my house, can you? You know, if you're, on a, if you're on, a, on a motorcycle, you get the, you get this, you know, like the fast, furious kind of experience. <laughs> but, but I don't know what can happen. What can be done? I mean, it's like there's also, uh, uh, you know, it's like it's a town road. It's not a county road. You got, you know, which police force who put the signs there? At least the signs in each direction are inconsistent. And the sign that is astounding to me is as you're coming into, it's. Uh, uh, if you're coming to the Route 9 intersection, there's a 40 miles an hour sign there. So if you've come from, you know, Pine Plains, for example, <laughs> come across through there, you're coming into the, the hamlet, you can't see that there's a stop sign down there, and you're, direct, you're, you're, in, you're given a 40 mile an hour speed limit. I don't know how far that is off of the, uh, off of the Route 9 intersection, it's, I would say it's less than a thousand feet. So that one at least. <laughs> uh, the other thing that I've been communicating with Ray by email uh, uh, about solar energy. So before you go to the second, yes, yeah, uh, sure. Um, first of all, didn't we have the county review that? Uh, we did, and they gave us uh, the list they gave us was like three pages long, had like 16, 18, 20 signs recommended, and it was like $1,500, roughly, to do it. Yeah, but I thought we, we decided to do that. Right? We never, I actually never. Because I think Jimmy wanted to let them do it. I wanted Jimmy to take a look at it, and he took a look at it and says, if they can do it for that price, we probably should let them do it. I thought we yeah. authorized something, or we talked about authorizing something. I don't think we actually authorized it to do it, but we certainly can. I said, brush off that old last man, touch it up. Mm -hmm. The other thing I remember we talked about was giving it to him to put the more essential signs in and then catch the rest yeah, so of them up. That's the kind of thing of where we left it because we weren't sure we were going to do the whole thing and you know, some of the signs could go up and I don't think we actually made a decision to do it all. It was a problem and I think we left it at that. But we did look into it. I don't know if you've been back since we talked about that, but we did have the county come down and map it all out. No, and I they came back with, uh, I don't know, 20 some signs recommended. Town or? No, just on that road. You know, <laughs> curves and speed and, you know, all recommended turns, you know, there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff. That there's, there's a lot of signs that, you know, in different areas that get updated each year. Yeah. And, and Jimmy does some of them, and now I think the county said they would do it for a certain amount. But why don't we bring that back up next month and then give a chance to get... I'll, get them updated. I'll have them update that list and we'll take a look at it yeah. again and see if we want to just do the whole road and, and if Jimmy, you know, thinks it. It's not, it's, it's not just me who see it, who, who notices this. So that's all I bring to the attention. It was the, during the emergency, like people were out there going, you know, it was so because it happened during a time of day that I'll call rush hour, and the traffic was stopped because it was, the street was blocked. So you when you notice it, you know, I was like. I don't know how, I think it was Don Van Wagner was stopping traffic at this corner. I don't know how many people he turned away, but 
a lot of people cut through there, aren't you? All right, well, we did, we did actually work on it a little bit. We well, just didn't make a final decision, much. but we do have that information, and we'll bring it back up and look thank at it. Thank you very much. I thought it would be helpful for the summer because, you know, kids go out on the street and play, and right. the woman I was talking to had a young son with her. I don't know how old he was, maybe seven or eight. And, I, I see more people walking and jogging on that road than any other road. A lot of people do it. Yeah. But right. this, the, uh, then some people were saying to me, you know, I got afraid, so I stopped. Yeah. You know, I used to drive. Oh, I, last summer I was jogging past your house, but. <laughs> yeah, and that would be one part of it. And then obviously the other part would be enforcement. I mean, that would be an like, issue. That's that's our county. Yeah, that's the other. Sure. You know, that's the that's the whole. I'm not you know, sure science. how much you'll get out of the signs. I think that you know it's good that we do them, but. And what I've read, the research generally says that people ignore them. Exactly, so. exactly, exactly. The only thing that I, is they are inconsistent in the two directions. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll definitely get that together very quickly. Thank you very much. So, so uh, the, what I, the other issue I wanted to mention was, um, well, in a way, it's a, it's a larger question. But in the, since the gentleman this evening were discussing the the. Uh, uh, effectiveness or, or lack thereof, or the message that you get out of Albany. So uh, when these, this is related to solar energy, and also cell phones, uh, the legislation that was passed in Albany, what maybe, you know, this was the one that gave, um, uh, uh, not rebates or incentives for people to, and businesses. First it was just houses, the uh, residences. Then there was a lot of appeal and it went to commercial uses. But the use was restricted uh, for the amount of solar panels that you could put on a building or related to a facility was like a percentage, minor percentage, related to the actual usage characteristic. So that limits the number of panels. Because if you have, say, so the first, one of the first uh, concepts I think we had in this building was, you know, what if you did the, the, the roof here? Because it's south facing right here, so you know, suppose it's supposing that it's structurally uh, able to hold it. The the uh, when we did some however many years ago that was an analysis of like the electrical usage of the three buildings, including including the, the garage. It was like it wasn't a huge amount of electrical usage. So you know that's where it's like well at that time like the investment. In the panels, etc., it didn't quite make sense, and there wasn't really any incentive, or, or not incentive. There wasn't any, any recognition of a governmental entity trying to do some kind of thing that, uh, to do a. a, a I'm not going to. I'll say energy conservation, but what I'm saying really is, it's a way to economize budget expense because you're not paying the electrical charges. This would have helped a larger, a larger utility user, like a major city or something like that, or the county. Mm -hmm. So if you take all of the county facilities and sum up all of their usage, you probably have a big number. Mm -hmm. So is there a way to factor into that calculation all of the towns? You know, just after you told me that, how do you make that number bigger? If you take each town's electrical usage, or pretend, not the residences, but the governmental facilities. You know, how big can that number be? So the reason why it comes to my mind is that I drive back and forth to Boston too much. And um, so I think I would have mentioned, maybe to Bob or something, as you're going eastbound, it's on the south side of the Mass Turnpike, in around, um, well, you don't know, it's, it's irrelevant. It's in the western part of the state. It's, it's near where the friendlies sign is in the <laughs> Uh, uh, Wilbraham. So uh, they, there was a farm field that was coated. You know, it's like you go. The, well, you noticed it when the leaves were gone. It was coated with solar panels. You know, I'm talking about like a big farm field. Then oh, there's another one. Now the last week I go, or, or two weeks ago, I go from here to Boston. I pass Exit 13, Framingham isn't far from downtown Boston. Inside the clover leaf of the highway is solar panels. So the problem in New York State, or the issue, it's not a problem, it's a legislative issue, is that there's the Public Service Commission and 
the way the laws were drafted 10, 15 years ago limited the ability of even individuals like uh, Mr. Solpar across the street to install a, uh, um, a non, uh, to, to install this, a, an alternative energy kind of facility. So I would just ask if you could just become maybe, as you're dealing with the county, maybe you could discuss what that, that's about in a more uh, in way so that everybody can learn about it, uh, what progress could be made. Because to me, it's a really, it's like a no-brainer. It is a no-brainer. If we're, if we're talking about saving, I'm not talking about make, spending money, I'm talking about saving money, saving taxpayer dollars, lowering maintenance costs. The way it can happen is just the way they do hydroelectric. In, uh, I don't know if those ones in the north part of the county still operate. But, so there's a third party that comes in. That's, I think that's what happens in Salpa, right? Does he have, he's, he, it's a third party that comes in and does this? Yes. It's a company that installs them. And you can lease or buy them, right? Am I right? Exactly. Them? Lease or buy. So obviously the Massachusetts Turnpike Authority is not gone into the business of solar energy. But they have gone into the business of leasing land that is an a leasing underutilized assets. And we're going to start to see that over highways, it's already over parking lots. If you've, I'm sure you've probably seen some of those happening where you, it's like, I, or it's, you know? No. Okay. In Poughkeepsie, they have them. Uh, I haven't seen them. In Poughkeepsie, they have, uh, it's, you think you're going under a, a, a shade, I'm sorry, I, I asked them, the time on me, you told me what mm -hmm. <laughs> they use it as like a, uh, uh, a canopy over parking. Where's the, the gallery now? Or? No, it's at the uh, one of the. It, you can find one if you go to uh, towards the, the Vassar Hospital. Okay. It's the Jefferson. It's an office complex. Well, just to just to give you some information, I mean, the county had a couple presentations last month come in about the net meter, net meter, what do they call it, net metering or something. Yeah. Um, we actually had two presentations from two different companies that come in. They said that well, they'd like to put up like a solar farm. And what they do is they sell the, the, the energy back to the county for like a fixed rate for the next 20 years. Right. So say uh, you're paying eight cents per kilowatt or whatever, um, they give it to you for a set rate, you don't have to worry about any inflation, nothing. They keep whatever they make above and beyond that, but they sell you, you, you know, you're locked in for the next 20 years, I think is the contract they're trying to do with the county. So we are actually looking at that county law, 10 or 15 that's percent. Right, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's what it that's is. That's what I'm saying. So they can't make money off a okay, small and that business. Was, and that was if the cameras were off. <laughs> A deal made with the Public Service Commission and the utility companies. Correct. That's so it was not beneficial to the consumer right. or to or to business. Right. Which is unfortunate because a lot more people would probably would pursue this. Absolutely. You know, but um, you know, for them to come in and just set up something to sell us back electricity, the town uses very small. County wide, it's you know, it's one hundred and eighty, two hundred thousand dollars a year. It makes sense. You know, they're interested in that because they put up a big solar farm on a piece of property, and they yeah. do exactly that. Uh, I don't think it's available to piggyback the towns in with the county to make it bigger. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe that's not. separate entities, but I mean, that's something I could certainly look into as we're having discussions on that in the I county. I mean, uh, uh, you know, when there's a will, there's, a, there's an attorney who can make the way. Unfortunately, as you said, there's a lot of, uh, <laughs> lot of uh, resistance on major parties against, uh, yeah. you know, that, against this. So, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure. That's the, that's the issue. That's the issue. And so it's like if the, if the, so part of what I'm hoping you'll do is if the question comes up with some higher authority of, a, of, a, of another uh, uh, elected level, that, that uh, you know, be, don't be, uh, or, or, you know, don't, I'm not, I'm not going to say that in the negative. I mean, there could be benefits. It's not all, uh, it, it's all, uh, it, it's either, we either all become like flood victims and, and uh, with, with all of our uh, uh, land ripped away by, by raging waters, or, or, you know, there are some simple things. Thank you very much. All right, well, I'll, I will, uh, we will, we, like I said, we've had discussions on this and we will certainly probably continue to have discussions and I'll keep the board updated on this. It's something we can maybe get in on, but. 
just to have the town separate, it's going to be very difficult because it's not really payback would be for Enron right Town. Because again, well, maybe, they don't let you. you know, not, or is it paid by somebody else and you're just renting the land? There is also a lease option, but then you, you know you're paying more as far as your user rate. And you know, again, how much do, does it cost us compared to what it would cost us to offset that? You know, the payback is it 10 years, 20 years, 50 years? And know. unfortunately, the price of oil has come down. But you know, that that right. that's that's a completely volatile situation. Yeah, very temporary. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other public comment questions? No. Anything from the board? No. We're good. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So we'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you.